Good morning and welcome back to our weekly 10 minutes of meaning. So glad that you're with us as we study the Ramchal of Moshe Chaim Lutzato, his winning formula for how to be the best version of yourself. I want to thank our generous sponsors, our dear friends, Chani and Lenny Grunstein, in memory of Chani's father, Mr. Aaron Tambor, Aaron Ben Yitzchak, for sponsoring this series for the year. If you'd like to sponsor a future class, please email lee, L-E-E, at brsonline.org, lee at brsonline.org. We are in the home stretch of understanding the Midah, the quality of precious, often defined or often translated as abstinence. But in Judaism, we don't endorse and we don't encourage abstinence in the sense that pleasure is something evil or bad. Abstinence, denying, depriving ourselves of that pleasure is the root or is the path towards holiness. Holiness is by engaging the world, elevating, transforming it. Abstinence itself is not a value, but discipline is. The notion of being sovereign, of being disciplined, of being in control, of not allowing the things, the pleasures, the distractions, the temptation, the appetites of this world to own us, but for us to own and to dictate them. And we last left off, the Ramchal was describing this in the world of eating, and the world of food, how even though a moment on the lips, even though we only taste and indulge in the food, very temporarily... And nevertheless, we are unable to exhibit the self-control. We eat, we eat uh, quantities, we eat portions well beyond what we need to nourish ourselves, well beyond what we need in order to feel full. Why? Because our eyes are even bigger than our stomach. Because we crave, we have an appetite for that food. And how foolish we are if only we had the discipline, the self-control, if only we had the thoughtfulness and the mindfulness to contemplate and to realize, is this hurtful, is this harmful, or is it helpful? Will it advance me or will it set me back? And yet, often, too often, we are so weak that we in fact engage in behavior and activity that is sabotages our own success and our own happiness. And continues the Ramchal. V'nei Kemosha is born in the chapter 15, acquiring abstinence. How to acquire that attitude of discipline and of sovereignty. V'nei Kemosha is born in Azadavar Gorn Kinyas Aprishus. What is the secret? What is the methodology? What is it that's going to lead us to a life of discipline? The answer is his boninus contemplativeness. Being thoughtful, being mindful. If simply I have an appetite and I indulge, if I have an urge and I act, then I'll get myself into trouble. But if I stop, and if I pause, and if I think, and if I contemplate, if I try to understand and I try to put in perspective and in context, then I'll live a life of discipline. So, kach sichlos mafsid oso, the asmada ben asan ve ansha agedolos, ha rod from achra kavur umar ben mahevel, ki bro oso esikara hu agdula hi, ef sharshalo tesora ta avasabo, lachmod osam. If being mindful is the mechanism towards discipline, then being mindless is exactly the path towards losing it. How are we not disciplined? An undisciplined life is the result of a mindless life. Because we're not thoughtful, and we're not contemplating, and we're not asking ourselves important questions, and we're not present in each act and thought and speech. We're simply going with the flow. We're allowing momentum to carry us. We're following what others are doing. If thoughtfulness leads to discipline, then thoughtlessness leads to destruction. And so does, so do our associations. Who we hang out with, who we are with, the peer pressure that's placed on us, when we hang out, writes the Ramchal, with magnets and people of high society who pursue and define their lives and the value in them only by honor and by vanity, Shar. it's not possible. If you hang out with people of vanity, if you hang out with people who crave things and crave honor and subscribe to superficial, then you're going to crave and want those same things and it will bring about destruction. When we see that display of splendor, when we see the ostentatiousness, when we see the grandeur, then the passions are aroused within us. We want it. We crave it. And we'll do anything to get it. We'll cut corners. We'll make mistakes. We'll have clouded judgment. We'll sabotage relationships. And we'll step on people. And even if we succeed, writes the Ramchal, in not allowing our inclination or our desire or our temptation to be our ends, even if we succeed in not allowing it to destroy us and to vanquish us, 
Nonetheless, we don't escape without a struggle. And this is what the wisest of all men, Shlomo HaMelech said in Kohelos and Ecclesiastes, Tov lalechas el beis evel, mi lechas el beis mishte. It's better to go to a house of mourning than to a house of partying and festivity. That doesn't mean it's better to be sad than happy. Of course, we want to subscribe to happiness and we want to merit to attend and participate in happy occasions and events. But what it means is, in a house of mourning is a place of reflection, introspection. It's a place where we talk about a life and a legacy. In a house of partying, it's frivolous. In a house of partying, it's all about the pursuit of hedonistic pleasure. And so if a person had a choice between the two, Shlomo Melch says, better to go to the house of mourning, better to reflect on our mortality, better to search and seek for meaning in our lives than to go to a house of festivities, than to go to a house of a party. And more valuable than anything, and there's so much to say about this, more valuable than anything is his bodidus. People think that his bodidus is the notion of spending time by ourselves, having a conversation with the Almighty, where we have shut off and disconnected from everything and everyone around us, where we are just experiencing just being. His bodidus, solitude, our greatest leaders were shepherds because only in the field, disconnected from others, did they think, did they contemplate, were they in conversation with the Almighty and with themselves. And we live in a world of noise. We live in a world of noise pollution. We live in a world where it's so hard to carve the space to just be, to think, to contemplate, to aspire, to have drive, to have conversation. Yakar Minakol writes to Ramchal, more precious, more valuable than anything is his bodidus. Just as it removes worldly pleasures from your sight, it removes the desire from the heart. You see, if the whole path towards discipline is mindfulness, and the path towards destruction is mindlessness, then the key to being more mindful is spending time with your mind, is being in contact and in conversation with your mind. And that is only done with his bodhidus. It's done when we're willing and able to be alone, when we don't always need to be stimulated, when we don't always need noise around us. King David already praised, he already praised the practice of his bodhidus, of being able to be contemplative, to be alone, to be in solitude, to be in conversation with our Creator. But Amr, he said in Telem Perak Nunhei, Psalms chapter 55, If only I had wings to fly like a dove, I would fly to a place far away to dwell. I would wander afar and sleep in the wilderness. David Melech is not a recluse. He's not trying to be away. He is not allergic to being with people. He means for periods of time to be able to disconnect, to be alone, to think, to be in conversation. Today we are in pain. We always need noise and sound and radio and podcast and talk and conversation and beeping and buzzing and vibrating. We always need something to stimulate us, but to just be to just exist, that's where breakthrough happens. We find the prophets, they would find a place to be alone on the mountain. Shepherds in the field. Our early pious leaders, they would follow in those footsteps. If you want to live mindfulness, which leads to discipline, then you need to think about, what are we up against? What are we confronting? What are we battling? Who do we want to be? How do we get there? How do we make a goal and a resolution? And how do we chart a path to be, to acquire, to attain it? This was the most effective means to acquire discipline, which would protect us from being caught up in the folly of our contemporaries. The world around us is pursuing and chasing an elusive happiness and pleasure. They think it will bring them the joy they're looking for, but it leaves a vacuum, a hollow emptiness. Hisbodidus, spend some time, designate time every day, a little time, a few minutes. Not every time in your car do you have to turn something on to listen to. Not every time do you have to go for a walk, do you have to put in earphones. Not all the time do we have to be in conversation with others. We're allowed to be in conversation with ourselves and conversation with the Almighty. The acquisition of discipline demands caution. Not to think that we can jump ahead or leap to the ultimate goal in a moment's time. You can't skip steps. 
You can't try to jump ahead or expedite the process. Slowly, slowly, methodically, little by little, add his bodu is for one minute, one minute a day, turn your phone on airplane mode, disconnect, turn everything off, close your eyes, and have a conversation. Just think, just be. And then you'll add a second moment, a third minute, a fourth minute. Don't announce to begin with an hour a day. He spoted us an hour a day. I heard Rav Nachman. I heard Rav Moshe Weinberger. I heard Rav this, Rav that. An hour a day. One minute. Start with one minute. Slowly, surely, little, increment. Until we create new habits, new customs, until we become habituated to a life of discipline. And then it will become second nature to us. Second nature to be thoughtful and mindful. Second nature to be aware and involved in everything we say, think, and do. Second nature to be disciplined, which will elevate us to higher and higher levels. And with that, we conclude the Midah of Precious, of how to live a life of discipline. Stay tuned, 845. We're going to go to Living with Emun. I hope you'll join us. As always, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe, and you'll be notified in real time every time we have a learning opportunity. Join us 845 for Living with Amuna. Join us tonight at 9 p.m. Special edition of Behind the Bima with a very, very special guest. Until next time, stay